is this part we have right now. Yes, this 82? Is that the engine, the old engine? 1995. 95. I say, but it's number 82, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, in the discussions I've heard at Charles meeting, uh, that it's not in good enough shape to do what we need to be done. Is that not true between the two of you? I got to refer that to the chief. Yeah. I have to refer that to the chief. Multiple to the mic, please. We've had multiple breakdowns, and I was asked by the fire advisory board, for the next five years, can I guarantee that that truck will be in service? And I said, no, I cannot. So our decision, the figures have been thrown around with us to replace it. We're looking at 500000 around that. Is that not the figure that we, we not heard so much about? I'm going to go like three to five. Three to five. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's the decision that we, we have to come up with because we need this equipment to get the proper equipment. I mean, it's proper protection that we need. In your opinion, we need this. We need to either replace it or fix it, right? That's correct. Yeah. And do we know what it would cost? Now, I know myself. I do a lot of backyard mechanical work and everything. Uh, if we're looking at 500000 I don't know. I, I, I see the truck, and it's hard to tell, you know, how much work that goes on. But uh, have you all had any estimates on what it would take to rebuild the engine and the transmission? That's the two main items in that truck right now. Well, the engine was rebuilt how many years ago? Four or five years ago, and the cost of that was? 19000 And that was, the cost was 19000 we, uh, a few months back, we had some transmission work done, and it was around 4,000. Uh, Allison Transmission, which does all Dade County's uh, transmission work as well, stated that w that transmission is on last legs, and when it goes, you're looking anywhere from fifteen to $20,000. Well, you know, that's, in my personal opinion, uh, with our financial situation we have right now, uh, if we say, if you had that engine just overhauled, it should be good for a few years. Because, you know, most of the, I know I run a diesel. A diesel, you know, is, is one of the best engines you can have because we're running on oil and we're not running on gas, which gives no lubrication. So I, th I think we're all right there. And well, Allison is one of the best transmissions you can get. So. If if we replace the transmission, would say with the new transmission, right. we could we could cut that cost quite a bit. Right. You know, and it's just let me say it's not just the engine or the transmission; it's all the little things that keep on going with it. It could keep costing us. It's um, valves. It's uh, piping. It. So I mean, it's always like it's a little constant something breaking on it. But like you said, we'll you know we'll have to make a decision somewhere down the road here. Freddie, if I could jump in with you here. Go ahead. Um, Steve, if I sure. may. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think first and foremost, we need to get this study like in gear, moving forward like yesterday. Uh, whether we have the money, uh, whether we have to pull it out of reserves or we have to do it from what, what, wherever we have the money located, we should borrow the money if we don't have it available and reimburse that division or department later. But we need to get this study in high gear and moving because without that information and that study done, we're, we're not going to know what direction to go. I, I'm not arguing that point. But what we're, what we're right here, the problem we have today, and I sit in a meeting and heard that gentleman standing there at the mic say, he cannot do his job with the present engine we got. So that's a very situa a serious situation. I agree with what we're doing with that study is another subject altogether. But the problem we have right now, which is a, a serious problem right now, is we got an engine that can't do the job and we don't have enough money to buy a new one. So we have got to figure out where we're going. I agree that the study we're doing has nothing to do with the protection we got today and tomorrow. All right, let, let, me, let me jump in and ask a different question. Have we spoken to Davey, and Davey's here, um, about if we have a circumstance or an issue, 
uh, if we break down, can they fill the void till we get that truck fist? Yes, thing? I have. I've talked to Chief Monopoli, and um, Chief Monopoli told me that they're at bare bones uh, right now, just trying to keep their apparatus on a rotor. And Chief's here, Assistant Chief here. Deputy Chief here. Chief, if I could ask you to come up from Davy just a minute, please. I appreciate it. I guess my question would be, if that engine's down, oh, do we have the ability to cover the town? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So we have the ability to cover the town, whether we have to overhaul an engine, rebuild the transmission, whatever the case may be. Um, obviously, we don't want to put you on the hook or extend you out if, if it's not necessary or not needed. But I just want to know and the residents to feel and understand that we're covered by, you know, you stating so that it's not, it's, it's important, but it's not critical. Correct. All right. Anybody else want to jump in here? No, well, I, I think what, uh, what the problem is, Mike, I, I hate to put you on the spot. I didn't know you were going to be here, but I'm glad you're here, uh, is... That's a serious situation we have right now. You know, you, you people have agreed to give us fire protection for our whole town. And you've been very generous in letting us work our fire department, uh, volunteer fire department in that whole situation. You've heard the problem we have with that engine. Is it jeopardizing our fire protection if that engine goes down? No, it's not, not jeopardizing okay. the fire protection. It's the safety of driving. Stopping the vehicle. I'm not sure exactly what the, what the technical problems are, what, what problems are having with that, that vehicle. Would y'all, how about speaking in the mic a little bit? I, unfortunately, I've, I got these things in my ears and it okay. makes it a little difficult. Yeah, being it's a 1995, it doesn't have the safety features that a new truck has today. And like I said, we're constantly, you know, little things are breaking down which add up after a while, but it's, uh, the new trucks, there's so many safety features opposed to what we have on the current vehicle, uh, apparatus. But Bob, what my problem is here is I heard you say at the meetings that you can't do your job unless we either fix that engine or replace that engine. So I'm, I'm concerned about my, my, just like the gentleman to you right there, he lives in our town. I live in this town. I'm worried about my family. I've been one of the unfortunate peoples in this town. I've had a major fire, but it was my barn, thank God, not my house. And let me tell you something. If you people have never had a fire, you're going to find out when you get a major fire in your house, it's serious. Let me tell you something. But in, and it's so it's a serious situation that we have with us right now. And, um, and we're very concerned. And me as, and as far as I am as a council person, it's one of our most important things. Is, is our fire and health protection for the people in our town. And we have got to come up with some way we can do this. And we have the opportunity here now. We don't get all we got. You got your people here that we can ask the questions and, and lead us in the right direction. I could tell you the truth. I go to these meeting people. We are very fortunate. We have more people living in our town. Most of them are retired fire chiefs or still working fire chiefs. We got the best expertise that anybody could have in a town this size leading us. So we, 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 we want to do everything we can to help you people. That's why I'm answering the question. And uh, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot, but I'm just trying to get some answers. Thank you, Mayor. Steve, one, yeah. other, one other thing I'd like to pitch in. I would say to you all that if there's any uh, safety issues related to that vehicle or equipment, not to drive it. They said we have us covered. So uh, we don't want anybody's life in danger. Our volunteers do a great job for us. We're thrilled to have them. We're happy with what they do. And, but on that, uh, on that same platform, we've got a study that we need to get done that you all are well aware of that uh, we need to get some information and facts back based on, uh, on that study. And if Davey's got us covered and it's not an issue, and if you all have any life safety issue with that equipment, I would tell you stop driving it unless we have the ability to fix it. So Yeah, when I say life safety issue, I don't mean it in that fashion. In okay. other words, the braking systems are updated to disc brakes, all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, just 
Well, I don't disagree better, with that, but I, right. I don't want to see us going out and spending three to five hundred thousand dollars before I spend whatever I need on a study right. to know what that information is. No, well, I if I can, if I can jump in there just for a second. So I think there, I think there's two different things we're talking about here. One is the study, which is a long-term projection of where we're going, where the department might grow, or whether it makes sense to to grow it, to keep it the same, to scale it back, that kind of a thing. That's that's a long-term looking more towards. Uh, the end of the five-year contract and preparing to be where we need to be when that arrives. Uh, the other piece is the immediate issue of the equipment itself and, and what I'm hearing really is that maybe what we need to be doing is coming up with um, three different alternatives and on each one of those alternatives have costs and pluses and minuses associated with it. One is a new vehicle, which I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of support for. Um, another one is buying a, uh, a, a used vehicle, something like that, that is, is newer, is more up to date. Um, and the other one is uh, putting together the cost that it would take to really renovate the truck we're talking about and get it back into this condition that you're comfortable with. I mean, I think that's what I'm hearing, yeah. right? So, so I think that's kind of uh, where but we're at. To me, all that's on hold until the study's done, unless it's absolutely Well, that necessary. was kind of the point I was saying, is I think it's two different things. Um, is, because because the, the study is preparing us for the, the, the future way out there. But what the chief is saying is that we have immediate needs now that uh, regardless of what the study says, we've got to have, we've got a five-year contract that we've got to live up to. And we've got to have the equipment in place to live up to it. And, uh, and so, you know, if nothing else, we've got to, regardless of what that study says, we have to be in a position to do what we need to do till the end of that contract. Okay, but we just had Davey tell us that we're covered if that equipment's down. Clearly, not an issue, not a life safety issue, we're covered, point blank. Secondly, if the equipment's down and we're covered, if it breaks, then let's address it at that time. It's not broken. I'm not saying risk your life or do anything dangerous out there. But I mean, if it needs brakes, obviously we got to get a brake job done on it. But the fact of the matter is, let's don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And that's what I'm saying to you because we're covered anyway by Davey. So while we're getting the study done, let's not spend more money than we have to. I agree with not spending more money than we have to, but I think this is a case where it is broke and we do have to fix it and we just have to determine. I, I, think, I think maybe a little clarification might be in order. I, I mean, because what I heard was that if, that if that vehicle was not functional, was there life safety issues in town? And the answer is no. However, I think we have a contract that says that we are, have this equipment that we are supposed to bring to the table to fulfill our portion of the, um, the deal. And they are, that part of that contract is not for them to supply us another piece of equipment. If it's in there, and if that's in there, then <laughs> I'm all for it. But I also heard him say pretty clearly that, that's not, that, that equipment is not available to us. So um, I, I don't think we have the option of saying, hey, our truck doesn't work. Let's park it on the side of the road for the next five years and let Davey. I, I mean, that's not what I said at all. Well, if the truck, if, what are you saying? Because that's what well, I heard you say. I heard not, you say that a, if the truck doesn't work. If the, if the truck doesn't work, we're covered. Davey I'm clearly, asking you, what, what do we do with that truck? Do we park it on the side of the road, or do we get a, do we... We get a price of what it's going to take to fix it, at what time, it, if it's broken and needs fixing now, get a price and come back to us and tell us what it's going to cost. Well, that's what I, that's, I think, that's but, what I but, but in the meantime, tonight, let's approve the money to get that study underway and get it done, because, I mean, those two go hand in hand. Well, Mayor, just one more. Yeah. Are you wanting, Gary, you haven't had a chance to say anything. Uh, I think of the situation that we have right now is, you know, we're not broke. We got money that, for emergencies. Uh, I think of the situation is with the truck we got, uh, my recommendation would be to know that we have the money to fix that truck. We, we know we don't have 500000 to buy a new truck. That's, that's, we know that. So I would feel a little, little safer knowing that we had the money to replace the motor, replace the transmission, whatever it takes to get that thing working. And I say is, I'm along with McKay, if we want to tonight, tell our town administrator to take it, some money out of reserve, go ahead with this study, for, but we're, like we're doing, we're talking about a five-year thing here down the road. We got a five-year contract with that gentleman standing right there, right. protecting us for five years. 
but we want to know what's going to happen in five years. Absolutely. And that's what the study is going to tell us. Can we go to our own fire department? Can we do have them do what we got now? That's what the study. But in the meantime, I think these people here need to be assured that we'll make sure that the truck that they got is going to be fixed when it needs to be fixed. I wish we could say we could buy them a new one, but I'll be realistic with you. <coughs> we don't have the money in the budget, and I don't see any any way we, we're cutting a lot of things here to do what we could do. But uh, I well, think with the I'd like to make a motion that whatever, wherever we need to take the money from, whether it's reserves or whatever, to uh, get this fire study underway ASAP. So if somebody wants to second that, I'd. I'll second it. Any further discussion on that, Gary? Yeah, I'd like to chime in here if I could. Um, I think Andy needs consensus out of us to move forward for, to get an RFP for, for consulting, and, and I'm on board with that. We don't know what it's going to cost yet for the study. There's been numbers thrown out up one side, down the other, from a low of 10 to a high of 40. You know, and until he actually goes out in the marketplace for a consultant, we really don't know. So I think that's, you know, step one, we've got to, like, you know, that, step up to the plate and get to bat. Then Absolutely. we'll make the decision whether or not we're going to do that. Meanwhile, we have equipment issues. And right now, it's not broke, but it's going to be broke. We know that. It's, it's wear and tear. It's going to happen. Um, and we'll have to address those as they come up. We do have the money for it. We do have it in reserves. If it, and this is a, a life safety thing. Uh, Davey can cover us in the short term, but I, I don't see it as a long-term solution. We've got to you know, build towards that. So do we need a new transmission eventually? More than likely, we're going to or get it rebuilt or this or that, but you know, $40,000 for truck repairs, if from the numbers I would heard thrown around uh, combined, is a lot cheaper than a, than a half a million dollars right. for a fire truck. So I think, uh, I don't see that as an issue here. Uh, if, it, if it breaks down and we have to get it repaired, we will get it repaired. We've always gotten them repaired. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that as an issue here. I think we need to move forward with the study, get that done and going in parallel with that and rest assured to everybody that we support the volunteer fire uh, you know, equipment uh, manpower the, the the whole enchilada, you know, and I, I think everybody needs to kind of hear that from it. Then, yeah. Good, absolutely. Good. Any other discussion? No. Okay. Erica. Councilmember Jablonski. Yes. Councilmember Fizikelli. Yes. Councilmember McKay. Yes. Vice Mayor Brightcruz. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chiefs, for your uh, it's underway support. By you know, I just want to thank you all for what you've done with what you got to what you have to do. Uh, I, I tell you, I, it's I, I'm a, I got a fire family. I got a son and two grandsons that are firemen, and it's it's a big job, and it's not an easy job, and it's one of the most important things in our town, and unfortunately, it's nothing you can shop. You can't go get a cheap one here, a cheap one there. You got to have the best, and we're going to make sure our town has the best. Thank you. Let me, uh, if I, I open it up to the public so they can, uh, I see some, uh, some individuals out there that would like to uh, express their opinion on this as well. Noel Hollingsworth. Um, some months back I spoke to the chief, our chief. <laughs> Got everyone's head flipped. Uh, too many chiefs in the room, not enough Indians. Uh, that the Broward County School System has a engine rebuilding program for training. And I asked him to check into that because they opened one right over here uh, in the part of Bergeron Park for farmers. Mm -hmm. And I asked him just now, and he said he was looking at asking them about units, not rebuilding and stuff. I think what we could do, because I know other departments have done this over in the southeast, gone into contracts with uh, the school board to rebuild the engines and transmissions and keep their equipment. But it does take time for them to do it because they have students doing it and then the faculty, which are trained mechanics, are checking it, each piece, over and over. But when it comes back out, it's really a, a fine quality piece of work. It would mean, in our case, I believe, getting a scrap engine and giving it to them to rebuild and have it in place 